So hello, I'm April Rovero, founder of the National Coalition Against Prescription Drug Abuse, also known as NCAPDA. Uh, welcome to this edition of our educational interview series that aims to educate and inspire viewers to take action. And that would be to prevent prescription drug uh, use disorder and overdose deaths. Today, we thank and welcome Monica Cameron, founder of Inner Sanctuary Wellness, and who is also a board member with NCAPDA. Everyone deals with certain levels of stress and anxiety, even in normal times, and we're not really in normal times right now. We have the COVID problem going on, the pandemic. We also have social you know, situations going on. And of course, we have our political situation. So this is meant, to, um, I think, to be a really timely interview. So uh, I know Monica is going to be providing some tips on how to manage stress along with a lot of other useful information. Um, I would also like to interview, or actually introduce and thank our three NCAPDA youth ambassadors that include Ankita, Charlie, and Shreya, who are going to be actually conducting the interview today. Uh, please continue to watch uh, after we finish the formal interview, uh, because we will be sharing some great resources that we hope you'll, you'll check out. And with that, I will turn this over to Ankita. Thank you, April, and I just want to thank Monica once again for doing the lived experience, for doing the educational series interview with us. Um, and based off of Inner Sanctuary, Inner Sanctuary Wellness, which you founded, we would like to know what drove you to found that. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's uh, such an honor. I, my journey started with working as a behavioral therapist, working with children with autism and ADHD. Uh, it was then I was introduced to Reiki, which is a form of energy healing. And I really saw the benefits of Reiki, how it benefited uh, the children along with the therapy that they were receiving. Uh, it was then that I decided to learn Reiki, learn other forms of energy healing. And on the side, I was also working as a teacher, working with children with special needs. As my children got older and I quit my job um, and I saw them getting independent, I um, because Reiki and energy healing had affected me deeply, I decided to take it up professionally. I founded a company called uh, Golden Touch Reiki. And um, very soon I wanted to go back to work with these children or these families whom I saw were going through so much stress. That was the time that uh, when I went back, instead of working with those families, I was introduced to individuals with insomnia, uh, depression, chronic pain and anxiety and even cancer. But slowly and slowly going forward, I did go back to work with chil those children who were now young adults. It was then that I found it in a sanctuary wellness that I realized that there was a deep need of alternative healing. And it was around that time that um, a family member, actually my husband, went through a medical crisis and I totally understood the impact that mindfulness, meditation and energy healing had. And that was the time that Inner Sanctuary Wellness really spread its wings uh, because the real intent was to offer opportunities to learn tools to attain um, deeper consciousness of the self, which I realized I had going through a medical crisis and getting the feedback from people, how calmly I faced the situation and took care uh, of my life in a balanced manner. So that is how it all started. Monica, thank you so much for providing like context on your story with Inner Sanctuary Wellness. Uh, I was wondering if you could dive a little deeper into like what exact like services do you provide and also elaborate a little bit more into like Reiki and like how it can be applied. So um, I offer meditation, mindfulness, Reiki, pranic healing, bars, emotion code. All these modalities actually help in reclaiming happiness and peace by reducing stress, managing emotions and letting go of the negative thought patterns that we have. 
basically our body has the innate ability to heal itself like when you have when you fracture your arm all the doctor does is puts puts it in a cast there's nothing really you can do about it except let it heal itself same way our body can do that we just have to learn how to regulate the emotions how to regulate the energy and let go of the stagnant energy and emotions that we are holding and the best example i can share is um how people have stress headaches they'll go to doctors neurologists and everything is fine physically yet they're having the headaches and the doctors would finally come to the conclusion that it's because of stress mm -hmm. so we are holding that energy in our body these modalities help you release that help you find ways to let go so um at inner sanctuary wellness i also partner with different professionals other professionals who are offering other modalities so together we can help others empower others by um i offer i also offer workshops corporate wellness workshops workshops for parents teens and parent ed as well so i hope charlie that explains a little how reiki and other modalities work Yeah, no, that was super helpful. And like when you talked about like the cast and everything, you know, I thought back to like the time I, I broke my arm, and that like makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. It sounds like Inner Sanctuary Wellness offers a lot of helpful and beneficial things. Um, so how does the work you do link to NCA PDA's mission, which is to prevent substance use disorder and overdose deaths, deaths primarily through community education? So I would start off by saying that it was at one of the job fairs that I was introduced to NCA PDA. Uh, that's where I met April, and the whole mission was of prevention was so inspiring. Her story itself was very inspiring for me, because I was also uh, my mission was the same to outreach people to prevent them uh, from uh, abusing drugs. see life throws curve balls at you but you always have a choice it's obviously easy to pop in a pill but there are choices there are other things that you can do because um when you take in drugs they just interact with the neurochemistry of the brain to make you feel happy but with mindfulness and meditation we can do the same things we can use the uh, the neurotransmitters that are the chemical messengers uh, that coordinate the transmission of signals from one nerve cell to the next and we can use those to produce happiness and that is what my mission was too to reach out to people to let them know and educate them and make them aware that we can these modalities can help deal with anger resentment anything like uh, the feeling of isolation or unworthiness which leads many times uh, to drug abuse so we have a choice we have these modalities and that is why i joined hands with nca pda to reach out to more and more people Thank you so much Monica and I really like how you established the connection between NCA PDA and Inner Sanctuary Wellness and diving a little bit deeper into that connection. So adolescents nowadays are subject to a lot of stress and pressure especially during the times of COVID-19 and as a consequence may turn to substances for relief. So for adolescents specifically what strategies do you have for them that can help them relieve stress? so um that's a wonderful question ankita i will uh, answer that very truthfully it can be a little challenging working with adolescents with teens because uh, when you mention mindfulness meditation um, sometimes they're not very open to it and that could be because of peer pressure too they don't want to see their peers sitting them telling uh, telling their peers that they are going to a mindfulness class or med or they are they're doing meditation yet um when i meet them separately they will tell me that yes you know that class i uh, learned a technique and it's really working for me 
So I have been conducting workshops and trying to reach out to teens. And um, I think it's just important for them to have a little open mindset and to understand the scientific foundation base of meditation and mindfulness. Look at the research that goes behind it. The research that shows the increased alpha big, uh, wave activity of the brain, the effect it has. And they will understand that when you are mindful, when you do some meditation or use strategies and incorporate in your day-to-day -day life, you can um, help yourself manage the stress you're going through. Stress of not being able to go out, meeting your friends, um, not being able to attend the milestones of your life, like going to the prom or your graduation parties or attending graduation for that matter. So just having an open mind there would definitely be helpful. And to understand that, you know, when you play basketball, when you go for a debate competition, you're actually practicing mindfulness without knowing that because you are at there, you are in the present. It's a, because mindfulness basically is a conscious direction of attention. So when you're playing basketball, you zone out from all the noises around you and you just focused on the ball. Same thing mindfulness uh, d does. So there are strategies like, you know, having a gratitude journal, um, using the mind's ability to focus, to visualize something good, to um, doing strategies like, and just like just tensing your body and releasing it, deep breaths, they definitely help, which you actually do before playing sports or you do before a, a debate competition, you calm yourself down as well. So understanding that, being open and using such strategies definitely help. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much, Monica. Yeah, so Monica, it's interesting that you kind of like reference stigma because I've definitely seen that where people are like, oh, yoga, meditation, all these like, you know, all, I guess like alternative forms of like therapy, they kind of just like dismiss it, right? Um, and so for like a lot of teens, I think it might be kind of challenging to kind of overcome like the peer pressure that they see um, in their friend, friend groups, maybe even in their families. So how do you suggest that teens might be able to bridge that initial hurdle um, where it's kind of like they can get to the point where they, they're able to do the research that you talk about, where they're able to find out the health benefits of, you know, Reiki, all these uh, other forms of treatment? So Charlie, I think the best way to do would be that... Um... It's just Google the internet, right? just Google and find out the research base, see that um, there is so much research on how mindfulness meditation has helped people with uh, PTSD symptoms, how it has helped patients who are rec in recovery. Once you try to do that, and also another thing that one a teens can do is try out right now, especially with COVID, there are so many resources available. There are free mindfulness workshops. In fact, NCA PDA is also uh, offering a series of workshop. Try out those out and you will see that the stigma that attached behind mindfulness or meditation that you have to sit down for 20 minutes and meditate with your eyes closed and you know you can't you are not able to do that that's not your cup of tea they'll realize that that's not the case this is mindfulness uh, energy healing is a part of life when you get hurt when your friend is not feeling good and you just pat them and say it's going to be okay hey that's part of energy healing that's part of, part of mindfulness so little things like that being conscious of the of your reflexes of the natural things that the body does or the human beings do will really be an eye opener I do understand that uh, there's a stigma of not telling anybody. There's also a stigma of this, all this being woo-woo and weird. But it's if you just look back, go back, have a talk with your grandma, and she'll tell you how it was a way of life earlier. 
life is very different now it's very fast based so uh, the there is a huge difference but if you go back to your roots you'll find them out and like i said there are so many resources out there telling you of the little things that you incorporate in your day-to-day -day life it's not about sitting for hours it's a little thing like i mentioned a gratitude journal just writing down two things what you are thankful for really helps those happy neurotransmitters get going and your mood will change i <laughs> hope that helps yeah absolutely i think i might do some of my own research after this <laughs> Well, and I just want to comment that it seems to me, as with breaking down any stigma, just being willing to speak out. So our youth and you know uh, ambassadors are in a position to try this, attend those workshops, and then speak out about it. Help break down the st stigma just by by telling everybody what a great experience they had. So hopefully, we'll see everybody attend our upcoming sessions. Yeah, thank you, Monica. That was great advice because. My family is also really into mindfulness and meditation. And at first I was super judgmental about it. And I was like, no, I don't wanna do this. That's weird. But I've actually found that it's really beneficial and it's helped me in a lot of situations. So I think that was great advice. I, I can totally understand that, Shriya. I have two boys of my own, two teens. And hey, they, they are not going to sit down with me for 15 minutes to meditate. And when um, and it was the same with my family, sir, and family and friends. It was when people saw me, how I reacted, or rather how I responded to situations, um, medical crisis in my family, where my husband had a stroke, my son was writing applications to go to college, uh, in a sanctuary wellness was growing, there was a lot going on. And then facing a medical financial crisis at that time would really um, May have anybody could have a meltdown but I did not mm -hmm. and it was I never had time to sit down for hours it was the little small things that I was doing in my day-to-day -day routine like taking brain breaks taking a little uh, pause that really helped me so that's what my mission is to tell everybody that it's it's doable you know it's not that boring stuff it can be fun as well yeah, I agree. It's super helpful. And I actually hope like more of my peers or just other people in general would like look towards it more. So I hope we can break down that stigma. Um, so if I'm a parent and I'm worried that my child might be using substances, how do I tackle the issue in a way that respects their boundaries, but also protects their safety at the same time? Well, um, being a parent, the very first thing I would do is be very conscious of my emotions, understanding emotions, how the body reacts to emotions. Because when I have to go to talk to my child who I suspect is abusing drugs, I should not be just overreacting or, or reacting in a way that is blaming. It's as if I am confronting them. Um, they need to have a conversation to really deeply understand what is really going on. What is the deep, what is the root cause? to establish clear rules, consequences for oneself and the conversation and setting small goals. Having a conversation with my child saying, hey, just don't take drugs. That's not going to help. So, and me reacting when my, if I suspect that and my child tells me the reason and I just start screaming or yelling is also not going to help. So I, as a parent, if I'm in that situation, I would recommend that you need to understand your emotions, manage them, regulate them, understand what the child is going through, and if needed, also get professional help. Get professional help yourself um, get a uh, talk to somebody, uh, maybe who's a friend first, and then profession. There are a lot of resources available out there. Help for yourself and for your child. And really have that conversation, have that openness. 
And so once you start practicing um, calmness yourself, uh, you practice Suppose if uh, the child, if you find out that the child is taking drugs because of anxiety, find out ways to reduce anxiety, practice them yourself. Um, children of all ages will practice things, learn things, do it if they see their parents doing it. So you not by if they're just told. So it, it's a typical example is if you keep having coke and you tell your child you can't have, it's not good for you. So the simplest example that I always use. So um, having that open mindedness, setting the rules, educating yourself that what can be done, where do you need to get resources and NCA PDA is a wonderful organization to get resources as well. And then monitor monitoring what the child is going through, how the child is getting the drugs, what is really going on. So that way you are respecting the child's boundary as well, not just barging into them and confronting them, but totally understanding what's happening and having that communication going. Um, and the, uh, to add to that, not just when you find out, but afterwards as well is actually more important. In my experience, when parents suspect that their children are abusing drugs, and somehow there is intervention that goes through well. It's afterwards when they are in recovery, when they need more help. And um, that is an even uh, important aspect to consider to keep that open communication and practice modalities like yoga, tai chi, mindfulness, meditation, energy healing. Look into these modalities that do not require you to take a medicine, but still helps reduce the stress that you're going through. Okay. Thank you, Monica. I think that can be really insightful for our parents who are watching because as the children in this situation, we always want to have a conversation and we don't like when it turns into an argument. So I think parents being super understanding is one of the things that even all of us children can really appreciate. And to kind of tie everything together and wrap up, I would like to ask you if someone is interested in inner sanctuary wellness, how can they contact you if they would like to use any of your services? Well, you can always go to my website, www.innersanctuary.xyz. For all the resources, I have some, uh, th this has my email also, which is monica.comran at innersanctuary.xyz. My website also has the link to you, my YouTube channel, which has some guided meditations, some other resources that you can use to uh, let go of the negative thought patterns and reclaim peace. Thank you, Monica. And I just want to thank you once again for taking the time to do the education series interviews with NCA PDA. And I'll have April wrap up for us. Yeah, and I, I just want to add that nothing you shared with us today is going to lead you down a path of substance use disorder and potential overdose. It is so healthy and well, and we can all have a better life because of these practices. So thank you so much for sharing. And Thank you to our youth ambassadors for doing such a great job and creating great questions and conducting the interview in such a professional manner. So thank you very much to everybody. Totally appreciate it. Thank you. I think that went pretty well. Here are a few resources we hope you'll check out. If you or a friend or family member has concerns related to substance misuse, suicide, or mental health issues of any kind, contact the anonymous 24-7 hotline at 800-662-HELP. Visit NIDA for Teens' website where fact-based information is provided that can empower you to make informed decisions about using and misusing drugs of all times. Watch the What is Naloxone video to learn more about opioids, how they affect the brain, and how an opioid overdose can be overturned with naloxone. Thank you for watching this interview. We hope you have found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to NCAPDA at either 925-480-7723 or info at ncapda.org. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to learn more. Thank you.